I grew up in South Bank. I lived here till I was 21. Growing up in South Bank's hard. It's hard to stay on the strip. A lot of uh, issues with drugs and lack of jobs. And so everybody who lives in this community, their main goal is to kind of get out of the area. When I was younger, my mum had taken me to church locally in South Bank as an 11 year old. My mum had a lot of struggles herself and she found her faith when I was young and we grew up as part of like church youth and things. We used to go on youth camps. It was quite hard to be um, a professed to be a Christian in South Bank, so it was something that I kept to myself. By the age of 15, I was hanging about with lots of people that um, were engaging in drinking and, and smoking, and it just started there, really. I lost my way, I didn't go back to church, and by the age of 15, I was pregnant, and 16, I became a mum. I was living independently in a um, a council house by the age of 17, raising my daughter with her dad. And we went on to have another child. Bringing kids up in South Bank, I didn't want that for them. That was my life, I didn't want it for them. So I really wanted to get out of the community. And that's when we bought a house outside of South Bank. And, you know, I was really excited to be leaving. I kind of done a hop, skip and a jump. And, and I said, I'll never go back there. But uh, later down the line, my relationship broke apart and then I struggled with, I took a deep dive into addiction, really spent seven years trapped in addiction. In that time, I met my now husband, Nicky. He was as lost and as broken as I was. We went on to have children together. We spent a lot of years, both of us, struggling with addiction and our relationship falling apart. My mental health was so poor, I just felt my life was a bit of a mess and I didn't know how to put it back together. At that point, I'd lost hope. My relationship with Nicky had had broken down and he was living elsewhere and I was on my own with the kids. And in that moment, I just felt like, um, although I didn't want to die, I didn't know how to live. I took a massive drug, uh, overdose of tablets and ended up in hospital. While I was in the hospital, I just remember laying in the bed and asking God for help and remembering as a child what it felt like to have God in my life when I was at the church with my mum. And for some reason, that's all I could think about. I knew God was really showing me his love. And so I re repented and I asked God to forgive me for all the bad stuff that I'd done. And I invited him into my life again. It was just a radical transformation from that point. I was set free from my, my drug addiction, I've not used drugs since that day. And God's been piecing my life back together. It took a little bit longer for Nikki. So Nikki, for two years, we separated. I was going to church and he still had a journey to do. He was living on his own and he, he, he done something really silly one day. He crashed his car and almost killed himself under the influence of drugs. At that point, he just remembers um, crying out to God himself and asking God to give him peace. He could see I had peace and he didn't. It was quite a long journey for me. It was, uh, I seen people around me changing, my wife, come to Christ and I seen change in, my, in Krista and um, I ended up giving my life to Jesus in the prison cell. Out of that came a restoration in our relationship and we just got this new found relationship with one another. God's been putting us on the right path ever since and in that time he really changed my heart for the community for South Bank. I've been a face in the community for, for the wrong reasons. When I become a Christian, I just had a heart for the broken, do you know what I mean? Because I was broken when I come to the Lord. I, I was uh, in a real bad state with addiction in and out of prisons. And I just had this heart for the community. I've always had a heart for the community. We spent a lot of time working in the food bank and spending a lot of time with the people, although we didn't live here. But in 2020, we felt a real call that God wanted us to move back. And so we bought a house in South Bank, which it was really crazy because I said I would never move back to South Bank and I would never live there. We've received restoration and what was broken beyond what we thought was repair, God's brought back together. And we've come back with a heart to see that in the lives of other people. We believe that God wanted us to share our story. So we got a space and we opened it up a couple of hours a week. And, and what we did was we just brought community together 
an opportunity for people to hear the gospel message, to feel connected into community, to share food together, to worship together. We called it the Open Well because we believe that he was going to open up the wells of salvation and that people, many people in this community were going to come to know him. People in South Bank are so hungry for, for God, so desperate for change and uh, every time they come in, people come into the Open Well, people are just like so receptive to, to God, and just, just giving their lives to Jesus. We then joined Tees Valley Community Church, which could see our heart for community, they could see what we were doing. Me and Nikki were doing a lot of work alongside full-time jobs, and we were, we were needing to have more free time as people were coming to know Jesus, people were wanting more support, and we weren't available to give it to them. And the church really had faith in, in what God was doing here. Um, and so we joined Tees Valley Community Church and, and then they're our partner church now for the Eden Team South Bank. We've got a strong Eden team serving into the community. A lot of people that have never left the community but have always loved it. You've just seen massive changes in people's lives. People are, are being saved weekly. We're raising up disciples and, and people are wanting to, to see change as well. Our main goal is to get people to know who Jesus is. That's, uh, that's my mission.